Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. Let's talk about, to me, a casino mispricing, a huge opportunity. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now understand, when you're betting, you have to consider the odds. This isn't just picking a winner. You're actually picking probabilities. The casino right now, because of the hype of the Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence fight, is offering you a plus 350. Let me repeat that. A plus 350 on Manny Pacquiao. Now, I'm just going to put this diplomatically, and let me just point out what a plus 350 means. You bet $100 on Manny Pacquiao, they give you if he wins the fight by KO or decision. They're going to give you back a plus. 350 that's $350 plus the return of your $100 now let me just say who in the division can beat Manny Pacquiao three and a half times out of every four and a half fights they have in my opinion the answer is no one this is like picking Michael Jordan or LeBron James in a one-game single elimination match. When a casino makes the mistake of offering you a plus 350 on a fighter who in his last fight became the first man to beat Keith Thurman, I believe you need to take it you need to lock it in, right? The bet I'm recommending here, this has to be part of your betting portfolio. I don't care what the guy next to you at the pub says. I don't care that right now we're living in a world where people view Errol Spence, who's unbeaten, as unbeatable. This is a plus 350 on a great fighter. I think you need to take it. The bet I'm recommending is Manny Pacquiao plus 350 to win the fight. We'll hedge the play later as odds come out. Let me just make a few points here. Right? And understand too, when I tell you what I'm doing here, I'm not trying to be controversial in the slightest. Right? This is the play that makes sense because the casino is giving you so much leverage to work with that you can start to get clever and you can start to look at Manny's history, look at Errol Spence's recent fights, and then structure the rest of the play so you win. If Manny wins, or if Spence wins, if the fight ends in certain ways. Now let's just talk styles for a second. Manny is still, and that's the word, still, so fast and so sudden that it takes elite fighters, Keith Thurman, Lucas Matisse, folks, those are two of Manny's more recent fights. We're not going back to the De La Hoya era here. It takes elite fighters several rounds. Sometimes, in the case of Juan Manuel Marquez, several fights to get the timing. Right? Keith Thurman, folks, he's losing the first half of that fight 
Above and beyond the knockdown, Keith Thurman could not find Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's fast, Pacquiao's sudden, Pacquiao hits hard. Pacquiao is shorter. So as Pacquiao's darting around, if you're a great body puncher, which Errol Spence is, how are you going to find Manny Pacquiao's body? Let me also point out, too, that there's a big risk, and I mean a big risk, trying to find Manny Pacquiao in the ring. Several guys have been dropped early. Right, folks, the guys I just named, Keith Thurman and Lucas Matisse, got dropped early. I want you to look up their histories. That's a rare occurrence in their careers. Let me also say this, too. And young fighters might not fully appreciate this. There are very few guys in boxing who are loved like Manny Pacquiao is loved. Right now, here online, I've talked about the fact that, in my opinion, Canelo enters the ring with a two round advantage. Very hard to beat Canelo on the scorecards. Right? If Canelo just shows up and isn't getting battered, many judges are going to give him the early rounds. I'm not saying the fix is in. What I'm saying is that there's a certain appreciation from the boxing community toward a fighter who is an ambassador for the sport, who carries himself with a certain level of class and dignity. Right? If you were making a movie and you wanted to cast a hero, you would cast a guy like Canelo, or like Anthony Joshua, another guy who enters the ring with a two-round advantage. I expect if that Fury-Anthony Joshua fight ever comes off, well, I believe Fury is the better fighter. I don't doubt that Anthony Joshua is going to enter the ring with a two-round advantage. I can tell you, I was raised in the 1970s. As good as Ali was, he entered the ring with a two-round advantage. Right? Not on the official scorecards, but you understood. If you saw the first six rounds of an Ali match and it was 50-50, you understood in reality it was four rounds to two Ali. Now, we love Errol Spence, but Errol Spence is not the living legend Manny Pacquiao is. Pacquiao has carried himself for years with a certain level of class and dignity that's going to be rewarded. He is going to be the person the crowd wants to win this fight. You understand, if Errol Spence comes in and blows away a 42-year-old, the fight's not that noteworthy. The fight then becomes Larry Holmes beating up on Muhammad Ali. Right? No, when you're a boxing fan at an arena, you want to see history. You understand it's historical. If Manny Pacquiao wins the fight, the fans know it. Just ask yourself. How many people really wanted Keith Thurman to beat Manny Pacquiao? You understand that fight is going to age better, knowing that Manny pulled the upset. When someone comes to you and says, hey, where were you on the night of that fight? You know that the fact that Manny pulled the upset makes the fight that much more special. Now, I'm not sure if an Errol Spence understands the magic that comes with that level of reputation. Ray Leonard had it, right? I'm just telling you, very few guys 
in the history of the sport have the level of goodwill that Manny Pacquiao does. I think Manny Pacquiao, in addition to being the more dangerous fighter early, fast, sudden, let's go back a little while, dropping guys like Shane Mosley early, right? Pacquiao's the kind of guy who, again, elite fighters have a lot to worry about. Right? You remember Pacquiao, Antonio Margarito. Margarito, who had been in rough and tumble fights against elite competition, was overwhelmed in the early rounds by Pacquiao's speed and suddenness. Now you couple that with the fact that when Pacquiao enters the ring, and it doesn't matter whether the fight is in Vegas or Texas, where Spence is from. When Pacquiao enters the ring, there's going to be a sizable portion of the fans there. We're going to want him to win the fight. Spence is going to have to go uphill, uphill, to dispense that. Right? And you mean to tell me that the casino is giving you a plus 350? Let's also lay it out here. Let me also point out, too, I know Marquez drops Pacquiao. What was that, the fourth fight? Right? It takes a while. Certainly not the first few rounds of your first fight against Manny Pacquiao to figure him out. Let me say, too. That size can be a detriment in boxing. Manny Pacquiao will be able to find Errol Spence's body. Errol Spence is a tall guy. Errol Spence gives away his height. <clears throat> right? Don't you think it's less likely that Errol Spence is going to find Manny Pacquiao's body? Hasn't Pacquiao, in fact, built a huge part of his career on taking out taller guys, right? The bigger Keith Thurman, for example. Antonio Margarito, who I just mentioned, right? Understand, it's a mistake. Given Pacquiao's history, <clears throat> it is a mistake to ask the question of whether an opponent is too big for Manny Pacquiao. That's a mistake, right? Because Pacquiao, of course, this fight's at 147. Pacquiao, of course, has been the champ at 154. Right? The better question is, wow, isn't this opponent too big to handle Manny Pacquiao's coordination, his speed, his elusiveness? We saw the Mikey Garcia fight. I congratulate Spence on that fight. I thought Marky, Mikey Garcia was going to beat Spence. But understand, Spence was able to establish a jab in that fight. He was able to repeatedly hit Mikey Garcia, who doesn't have Manny Pacquiao's head movement or bounce. Pacquiao, the last time I saw him against Keith Thurman, again showed us that he has some of the best legs in boxing. Now, Pacquiao has been around for more than a decade in the sport. Tell me the fight where Manny Pacquiao was controlled by a guy's jab. Think about it. He's fought some guys with some pretty good jabs. Tell me the fight where a guy's jab baffled and bludgeoned Manny Pacquiao. I can tell you of a strategic fight, the Mayweather fight, where a jab was able to keep an injured Manny Pacquiao, bad shoulder going into that fight, from crashing the pocket. But understand, that's the secret of this fight. The Mayweather fight goes the distance, doesn't it? Let's look at Errol Spence's last three fights. Danny Garcia. Sean Porter, 
Mikey Garcia. Folks, all of those fights, each of them goes the distance. I believe Pacquiao is going to dominate the early rounds. Why? Because he's Manny Pacquiao. That's what he does. I think Errol Spence thinks he can channel Jeff Horn, a guy who bodied Manny Pacquiao early and was able to get a decision against Manny Pacquiao. But let's remember that Horn fight carefully. There's a moment in the Horn fight where the referee goes over to Jeff Horn's corner and tells Horn's corner, you got to show me something in this fight or I'm going to stop it. I think Spence, taller than Manny Pacquiao, isn't going to have Pacquiao's coordination. I think Spence is going to enter the ring with a two-round deficit. I think it's going to take Spence, as it took Keith Thurman, several rounds to figure out how to even find Manny Pacquiao. This is while Pacquiao is once again exceeding expectations with the power of his punches. Errol Spence may well win this fight. He might. But I'm being compensated for the risk with a plus 350. Right? I also feel that for Errol Spence to win this fight, it's going to look like the Kell Brook fight. Let's remember, early against Kell Brook, it's Kell Brook who has the hand speed advantage on Errol Spence. Right? Spence is not as fast-handed as Manny Pacquiao. Quite frankly, who is? So I think Pacquiao, with the hand speed advantage, the better legs, the more unique style where you're trying to find him and he's bouncing around the ring and you can't quite catch up to him. Even when you catch up to him, He's hard to find. He's moving his head, right? While throwing power shots back at you. Shots that can knock you down, like the one that knocked down Keith Thurman. I'm expecting Pacquiao to have his best moments of the fight in the first four to six rounds. But understand what that means. If he enters the ring with a two-round advantage... That's just the way I see it, folks. I'm talking about how I believe the judges are going to score the fight. Already, if the fight is an even fight, after six, Pacquiao will be up four rounds to two. Right? If he couples that with hurting Errol Spence, which is a distinct possibility, because Pacquiao has hurt guys early in too many fights to mention. Right? The Lucas Matisse fight doesn't even make it to the later rounds, folks. Then Errol Spence might find himself in round seven, down two or three rounds. Think about it. Right? If the casino has given you a plus 350, I'll take my chances. Not only that, depending on how the odds lay out, I might be able to simply hedge the bet by taking the over. Right? Let me also say, too, that if Manny Pacquiao is up by three rounds, by the time you get to round seven or eight, good luck getting the decision. Just ask yourself, if you're down, by three rounds against Canelo in the eighth round. What are your chances of winning a decision? Understand how loved Manny Pacquiao is. He lost a decision once to Timothy Bradley. In a fight, I thought Bradley won. Right? Um, 
just understand people were outraged. They were outraged. That's what happens with loved fighters. Right? If you go back and if you look at a film of the Keith Thurman fight, if you look at a film, quite frankly, of the Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran rematch, you're going to notice that the loved fighter, while he had moments, while he looked good, wasn't dominating the fight the way we remember it. Right? Go back. Look at the Danny Jacobs Canelo fight. Canelo wins the fight, but wow, you know, in your memory, you're thinking, oh, yeah, Canelo looked great. Then you watch the fight, and you notice, well, you know, Jacobs actually won his share of the rounds. That's the illusion that greatness gives you. Right? If this fight makes it into the eighth round, and it's competitive, just ask yourself, who is the crowd going to root for? If the casino is going to give you a plus 350 here, more importantly, understand you could have hedges throughout the parts of the fight that you feel are going to test Manny. Again, Danny Garcia went the distance against Errol Spence. Look at the scoring in the Sean Porter fight. I believe that's a split decision. Are judges more Sean Porter friendly or more Manny Pacquiao friendly? Right? If you swap out Sean Porter for Manny Pacquiao or Canelo, is that fight still a split decision in Errol Spence's favor? The exact same fight. Mikey Garcia who doesn't have Manny's experience at 147. Great fighter, but doesn't have the experience at 147. Goes the distance against Errol Spence, right? I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I'm taking the plus 350. I think it's outrageous. As I've said, casinos don't offer plus 350s in a one-off involving loved fighters, right? If you're in a casino and they say, hey, we're giving you a plus 350 on Ray Leonard. We're giving you a plus 350 on Roy Jones right after he beat Keith Thurman in his last fight. I believe your answer should be thank you. I'll take it. To the casino, thank you. I'll take it. The plus 350 on Manny Pacquiao. As to win the fight, we'll figure out the hedge later. I privately see this, now publicly see it, as a tale of two fights. I expect Manny Pacquiao to be the fighter exceeding expectations in the first half of the fight. I expect Errol Spence to make a ferocious comeback in the second half of the fight. I'll be looking at props in the second half of the fight as a hedge on the plus 350 that I'm getting with Manny Pacquiao simply to win. I just feel that this endowment is too good to pass up. I believe the line is going to tighten up considerably. Right now, people are caught up in the moment and they see Manny Pacquiao fighting a guy who's in his prime. And they're supporting the fighter of the moment. Isn't that exactly the mistake that betters made who supported Keith Thurman against Manny Pacquiao? This is an all-time great. In a single elimination match, you don't bet against Michael Jordan. You don't bet against LeBron James. You don't bet against Tom Brady. And you certainly don't bet against Manny Pacquiao when you're getting a plus 350. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.